Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Blizzard Watch podcast, where we talk about Blizzard Entertainment and its many games, and then occasionally some other things. Uh, if you like us going on off topic, we had a pre show, which we could do that on quite a bit. Today's was interesting, uh, pretty off topic y. Um, with me again, as is usually <laughs> the case, uh, Joe and Liz, who are the masterminds and geniuses who make this whole thing work while I gibber on like a maniac. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to talk about this week. Um, I'm just going to go straight into it, I guess. Cataclysm Classic is going to be out on May 20th, if you are waiting to see what that's going to be. And the pre-patch is going to be the end of this month, uh, April 30th. Um, again, this is, you know, it's it's not unexpected for there to be almost a month-long pre-patch, uh, in this case, 20 days or so. I, I'm, I don't know. I, I do not know how to feel about Cataclysm Classic. I really don't. <laughs> I think, oddly enough, if we're talking WoW Classic, it's... It's the season of discovery that has my intention. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so what about you guys, uh, Liz, Joe? We'll go with Liz first. I, I agree with you. Season of discovery is doing so many interesting things right now. But I'm actually, I'm tempted by Cataclysm Classic. Because back in, you know, the olden days when Cataclysm was shiny and new, I, I quit the game during Cataclysm. I was super burned out. My guild had just dissolved. And uh, I was playing a paladin. Paladins, like, got turned upside down and inside out when Cataclysm launched. And I just, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I don't have anyone to play with. And I quit the game. So I never played Cataclysm when it was current content. And, you know, maybe that'd actually be interesting to go back and play Cataclysm as it rolled out. Now that I am older and wiser, maybe. And just just experience that. Experience the rollout for for uh the first time actually because i i was just never there for this but i don't know where i would find the time to like just buckle down and play a cataclysm classic i i yeah that's that's a tough one um joe anything i mean i don't have to worry about it i will not be playing cataclysm classic um i mean i big time saver yeah i've made my opinion known on the podcast about it i think a few times and I i know some of our listeners uh vehemently disagree with me uh, and that's fine. It's it's not for everybody. Um, it's definitely not for me. So I've and I, the problem that I and I say this with classic a lot is with the different phases. I've been there, done that. I've done that mm, thing yeah. already. And it's not what interests me about old Warcraft anymore. What interests me are stuff like the seasons of discovery, specifically because it's taking things that I knew and modifying them or doing something new or different or interesting with it. Um, I, yeah, like I, I lived through cataclysm. I did my time. Um, and also cataclysm is, is an expansion outside of raiding with Matt for a little while was a not great experience for me as far as a player goes socially. Um, for whatever reason, that was the time where I hit the like critical mass of trolls and everything else. And I don't know if you remember this, but that was back during the height of of uh, our website when I was doing a, uh, a, re- a relatively sparse article because it was only whenever it was we had something or we needed something to run. I would do it. It came from the pug and it was always about the experience of uh, pugging in the various content and whatever reason, like cataclysm was just effing awful for me. My experience mm-hmm. with pugging. I have I I've told you guys the story about the the paladin tank who had an outright racist uh, macro, like straight yeah. up racist. Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember mm. what his macro was as much as I remember the shock on everybody's voices when he triggered that thing, and they were like, "Nope!" Like people people dropped out so fast. I only managed to get out like second, <laughs> uh, and I was the healer on that run. So it was like, yeah, uh, one of the rogues dropped and I'm like, yeah, I'm gone. Have fun with that. Uh, and mm. so, so, yeah, I, I kind of have to agree with Joe on Cataclysm, at least in that regard. Um, yeah, although hopefully, am, hopefully people will have a better experience this time around. I'm, yeah, I absolutely don't think the thing about this that uh, we've always said is that that this you can't go home again. This is not the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in a way, that's good. Because it's very unlikely that Liz is going to have the experience we had. Because keep in mind mm. that the growing pains that Cataclysm had, that we, we we forget that it was coming off of Wrath of the Lich King. Mm-hmm. Wrath of the Lich King 
for better or for worse, was the single most popular the game ever got. Mm-hmm. It, it, is, it was the high watermark. And people coming off that, going into Cataclysm, Cataclysm was different. They changed the talent system. They, they squished gear. They changed a bunch of stuff. And no, and a lot of people who who went into to Wrath of the King partially because they knew who Arthas was and they knew who the Lich King was and they were really excited about finally getting to fight him. Well, they didn't know who Deathwing was because mm-hmm. there weren't as many, you know, Ra- War, you know, Warcraft Two players. You know, he comes up in Warcraft Two. He's not that big a deal. Like the game where he sits there smoking a hookah never even came out. Um, he's in a couple of books that that were not the most popular books either um so yeah i feel like a lot of people didn't really know what to make of deathwing a lot of us were like super excited because he's such a big lore figure but if you didn't really know the lore uh and you just knew the like warcraft 3 stuff then who is this guy why why do we care uh and and he's everywhere why is he why is he burning me when i'm trying to like work on like leveling my alt and yeah all this other stuff right like yeah i get you and combine that with the fact that they did so much redesign of the world, uh, and they've yeah. never done that a lot. before. Yeah, and they've never done that before. People don't. We're used to them doing it now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like we, they they throw in new quests and change stuff around all the time. Mm-hmm. But in Cataclysm is the first time that like Gilneas is here now. Uh, you know, you you and now it's gone. <laughs> you know, but you've got Kaz- Kazan. Oh no, you don't. Um, <laughs> it just it, there was a lot of churn. A lot of people didn't really know what to make of it. And I think that in this case, going back to it like blind, like you are, you'll, you'll get a different experience just because you won't be playing it with a bunch of people who don't know what's happening. Hmm. Yeah. Like, and, I, and I think that that means they'll be a little more tolerant of it. I, I like to think so. Um, eh, you, I, I, you never know. I do remember too, that we did a, the, the previous site, we did a, thing where we went in and did a dungeon on the on the ptr not the ptr the mm-hmm. actual beta we did it on the beta and uh, that was hilarious to tank <laughs> because nobody had any idea what they were doing uh i don't think that's going to happen this time i think people are going to be relatively mm-hmm. uh, even though this stuff will be different there's going to be a lot more people who know what's going on so that's my take on it and the thing about cataclysm is when it first came out cataclysm was not my thing but, you know, maybe it's your thing. Maybe it's someone else's thing. And if you, if it's your thing, I'm glad you can play it. If you're someone like me and you join, and you didn't play during Cataclysm or you joined the claim game later, you can go and experience this for the first time. And maybe you will love it. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, the, pro- the big problem with WoW Classic is a lot like what Joe said. I don't feel the need to go back and redo stuff that I've already done. But... This season time, of discovery is really yeah. interesting. Season of discovery is super interesting because it's different. And cataclysm, yeah, it's 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 kind of got me interested. I just don't know where I can find the time to like level a classic character <laughs> all the way up to cataclysm levels because I yeah. I haven't. I have like someone who's maybe level five and I haven't stuck with it. Yeah, so uh, that is so, that is the issue. Yeah, it's that's tough. That's tough. Uh, but since we talked about it, we should probably move on to a segue to the WoW Classic um, Season of Discovery Phase 3. That rolled out last week on the 4th. Um, uh, yes. And one of the things that the Discoverer's Delight XP buff is still rolling, I guess. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, um, they changed the, some stuff, right? Because you say yeah, here they did, just, so I wanted to ask you Yeah, about they, it. they actually hotfixed Discoverer's Delight just this week. So, and they... They continued it, it, they introduced it in Phase 2, they continued it into Phase 3, um, with players from Level 1 to Level 39, that was the, 40 was the previous level cap, so would get plus 100% experience. So, you're going up to 39, you get double experience, all the time, and a huge boost in how much gold you're earning from quests. And, uh, but in Phase 3, players from Level 40 to 49, the new level cap is 50, will get a plus 75% experience increase. So it's like you get a big experience boost catching up, you know, to the current uh, phase three content, but then you get a pretty big uh, experience boost after that, leveling through the new content. It used to be when they first launched phase three, which wasn't that long ago, it was last week, uh, it was a plus 50% for levels. Uh, 40 to 49 
and they've they've already buffed it. They've buffed it to 75%. They didn't think it was enough. They thought that the new Nightmare Incursion uh, event was giving too much experience and overshadowing everything else. So they nerfed Nightmare Incursion experience a little bit, but they buffed overall experience, you know, a significant amount. Uh, from 50% experience boost to 75%, that's a pretty big chunk. Yeah, so, so they're basically trying to, yeah, they're trying to move, prevent the thing that happened during Legion, where the one event, the invasions, were so mm-hmm. powerful for leveling that nobody did anything else. Yeah. yeah. But so it's also, just as looking at Classic in general, it's really appealing because you can play Season of Discovery and you can really zoom through the levels because Classic leveling is it's kind of a grind. It's kind of a grind, which is one of those reasons that I'm looking at Cataclysm Classic and saying... You know, that might be fun, but but that's mm-hmm. that's a time commitment. And look at Season Discovery, and it's like, you know, they just want you to play. They just want you to go in and play and zoom, zoom. Yeah. You want to play? Okay, you can have double experience all the time, anywhere. It's like, great. I can just log in and play. Okay. I also want to ask about the, the Warlock pet. Does the Warlock pet, it's like it loots for you or something? I was trying to read the post about it. The imp, right? Like the imp does the weird stuff. Yeah, I believe yes. so. Yeah. Yes, there is a there's a new imp pet, the explorer imp. Okay, I initially also thought what you were thinking that it would go and loot things for you. It does not do that. I'm sorry, it doesn't. That is do unfortunate. That. It is unfortunate. But you know, while you are playing your warlock, you can wander around the world with your little explorer imp with you, and sometimes you'll see a portal, and you can talk to your little explorer imp and say, "Hey, imp, go through this portal." And the imp will be like, sure. And then uh, for a certain period of time, you can't summon your imp because he's gone through the portal. He's wandered off. Uh, but then you can summon him back eventually and he'll give you like a sack of goodies. He'll give you a little sack of treasure that um, it can have some loot in it. It can. It has a chance of dropping the rune of the Felguard, which gives you a Felguard in classic WoW. And um, various green and blue gear. And it's like, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's just. The interesting thing is how you get it too, right? Like you have a chance of getting it from just like using drain soul on an enemy monster. And each time you kill something with it, there's a high chance of that. You get an explorer soul, Mm -hmm. uh, which teaches you how to get the explorer. And which is, that's kind of rad. I like that. That's neat. Like, oh, you're an adventurer. eh? Give me a soul. Now you're an imp. (laughs) Ah. Yeah, it's one like of those things that makes it's one of the things that makes Season of Discovery so cool and so fun because this is weird and different and now suddenly you just you just have another imp now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's just going to collect treasure for you. Uh, well, tre- it, treasure it with an not- air quote because some of the stuff you can get in there is like mm-hmm. here's a broken binding bracer. Uh here's some burning pitch. <laughs> Otherwise known as the original flaming poo of wow. Uh you might get some milk. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. you'll get some dollar on sharp cheddar. Yeah, I, I don't know if you want to trust milk that an imp has fetched for you out of a demonic portal. I feel like I feel like you're trusting the imp to go through the demonic portal without your like direct supervision. You kind of already are accepting a certain amount of like risk here. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to. You don't have to be like you know cavalier with it. You can you can gauge your risk and go. Okay, I'm willing to take gold from you. I'm not necessarily willing to drink something that you come through with. I don't know where you got that milk. I don't know if that milk was on a body. By the way, this is a problem I've always had with World of Warcraft: eating food off of dead people. They're dead. Like, I, you don't I know don't the food like didn't it. do it. What? They're they're dead. Oh. You don't know that the food didn't do it. I, yeah, I don't know how they died. Uh, what also gets me is though is like, as my wife was pointed out, milk don't keep that long unless you ferment it. If you don't have refrigeration, mm. and mm-hmm. and fermented milk, uh, if you ask, go ahead and ask you know the Mongol hordes. Fermented milk will kick your butt. It is one of the most alcoholic <laughs> things you can drink. It is crazy strong because the alcohol process absorbs sugars and turns them into alcohol milk is loaded with sugars so fermenting milk is like a, it's an express trip to rocket fuel well is that like what and genghis milk. khan and them used to do too yeah they still drink it it's still yeah. huge uh and and it's just it is like rocket fuel it is straight up like this side of everclear you're not going to get much stronger than that stuff so yeah i've always been like this milk is either 
lukewarm, regular, unpasteurized milk that has been on this person's body for a while, or it's rocket fuel. Either way, I'm not touching it. But then again, I play a warrior, so I don't need to drink anything. <laughs> Warriors apparently never get thirsty. In World of Warcraft, mm. your warrior is just never thirsty. I thirst only for blood, I guess. You know, uh, but re regardless. I'm, I'm going to go totally off topic for a second here, but I've been playing oh, yeah, a haven't. warrior... Uh, well, you know, I'm going off topic in a different direction because I've been playing my warrior all lately. And man, is it just me? Y'all have to give me your opinion. Or is charge like the most satisfying button in the entire game to press? You just no, 100% oh, is. You're going you're to knock me back. Well, no, I'm going to press this button. Char charge oh. and leap are, are very satisfying. The thing about <laughs> charge, too, is charge used to be something you had to wait till level 10 to get. And mm -hmm. then you had to wait, like you could only use it out of combat. And over the years, Sanity came into the world and they were like, no, just charge whenever you want. You don't have to have a separate ability to charge in combat. It's just charge. And so now charge is this happy, fun button that, that lets you run up and make new friends. You see a new friend over there. He, he looks like he needs a hug, possibly a very pointy hug. So you charge to him and you give him as many pointy hugs Maybe he's got like a, a, a headache or something. So you just whack him on the head a few dozen times. Then you repeat with the next guy. It's great. You're like the welcome wagon. Uh, at one point, I remember even saying, I think this was back when the last place closed down. I wrote a post saying something to the effect of, you know, you are the weapon as a warrior. You're the projectile. You are literally shooting yourself at the enemy. You don't shoot them with guns. You shoot them with you. Just boom. Hi, here I am. Whack, whack, whack. Yeah, charge is great. Leap is great. <laughs> Anything that allows you to move like that. And I say this, you know, this is not me dogging on paladins. Paladins have a lot of cool stuff. But it always feels with paladins like, you know, I'm chasing you. Stop running away. I'm going to have to hit you with a hammer from over here. Fine. I'll get on my elephant. Fine. Here. Whack, whack. Oh, he's running away again. <laughs> with, a, with a warrior. Charge. Charge. Hamstring. Charge. You know, you're not getting away. Charge. Hamstring. You're not going anywhere. Stop running. <laughs> I'm going to be I, yeah, right on you. As a, as a paladin, you do have to throw hammers at people a lot. I mean, if anyone runs away, it's you're you have a limited toolbox, and your toolbox is a hammer. Yeah, and you're throwing hammers at people, and you're getting on your your like ram or horse or I don't remember the kodo if you're a, a tauren, whatever, uh, a big shiny bird if you're a, a blood blood elf, and chasing them for like ten, <laughs> three seconds, and then you're like, oh, it's my, my horse ran away again. Now I'm just going to have to throw hammers at you until my horse comes up. <laughs> uh, ow, ow, ow! I'm being attacked by, by the, like, you know, Home Depot. Oh, God! <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I do think charges him. Uh, but to try and actually get this somewhat back on track, this week, um, uh, it's, it's the ninth as we're recording this, right? Yes! Yeah, so I'm check. I had in, to check. Yeah, in three days, so probably around Friday. Uh, I don't remember what day, but the 12th of April, Diablo 3 is getting season 31, which is, we talked about it last week. It's the one with the Herodric Cube Amania, where you can basically just take any three powers you want. Uh, they don't have to be dependent on your slots. So you could have three ring powers or three amulets or three swords or whatever. Just any three powers you want, which, which does allow for some fun meta builds. And some kooky shenanigans in terms of like you know coming up with powers that you would not normally have access to. Uh, I I enjoyed it the first time, and so I think it's cool they're bringing it back. But I mean, this is like you know this is at this point Diablo three has got so much in it. <laughs> like there's a lot it's of stuff. True. There's a lot of systems. I don't know that I have the the mental fortitude to actually sit down and plot out all the permutations of all these abilities to get to my ideal build. Uh, I mentioned choice paralysis again today, and it's like, well, you want choice paralysis? Okay, first, get up to, like, level 70. Okay, now, start leveling your paragon points. Oh, wait, have you finished the Altar of Rights yet? And by the way, you can now get these legendary powers in any order you want. It's like, help me. Oh, God, this is a lot. But I still think it's kind of cool. You, what do you go ahead, Liz? I, I mean, and it's like, you have this, and you also have Diablo 4, which I, okay. And I'm going to admit, I have yet to get a character to level 100 in Diablo 4. I just haven't. I haven't made it all the way to level 100. And I have played a lot of Diablo 4. I, mm -hmm. I have never gotten all the way there to max level. Uh, so you've got that. You've got Diablo 3 right now, 
which I I remember playing this theme when it first came around. I really enjoyed it. You could make some fun builds. But who has the time? We've got Cataclysm Classic coming up. I would like to play that, but there's no way I have the hours in the day. Oh, and by the way, I haven't finished Baldur's Gate 3. By the way, I haven't finished Cyberpunk 2077. By the way, Star Wars Outlaws is coming out in August. You know, it's like, how do we make the time to play all of these games? Yeah. Every game, every game, every genre is like crushing us with more games, more battle passes, more seasonal content, more things you will miss out on unless you do it right now. Now, 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 now. And where's the time? Where are the hours in the day? Yeah, I, I mean, know. do you want to eat? You know, you kind of have mm-hmm. to make money. There's, yeah. Uh, and the other thing, too, is, like, while all that stuff's happening and games have become, like, you know, engagement-driven, there's also mm-hmm. stuff like, have you guys heard of Songs of Silence yet? No. Okay, it's an RTS that's coming out. It's kind of an RTS. It's sort of like an RTS and a CRPG had a baby, and then that baby ran away with a roguelite and and a 4X game and, and a kind of a polycule. And I don't know how they got a kid from all three of them, but nevertheless, that's what Song of Silence feels like to me. It's it's gorgeous. You should look it up. It's a beautiful looking game. It's got those elements that are like kind of a, it's got a, it's got a pretty interesting story from what I can tell. I have not gotten to play it mm. yet, but I've, I've gotten to look at the story a little bit. Pretty interesting story about these like, you're, you're the refugees from a the city that's been destroyed by the evil crusade that wants to put an end to to, to the light. I mean, the, the song it's called, which is like the, the kind of the holy thing of this world. They want to destroy it and create silence so that they're no longer at the mercy of fate. They want to be like the masters of the world. So they want to destroy something, create the songs of silence instead, blah, blah, whatever. Really pretty, uh, interesting mechanics where you're kind of like, it's sort of, it's, it really does, when I look at it, it feels like you're playing kind of some, some kind of demented mashup of Civilization and World of Warcraft, or not World of Warcraft, Warcraft 3, and at the same time, also playing Dead Cells. Like, and I, I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but I do know that it's going to take me time to know if it's good or not, and I don't know if I have the time, you know, I don't sleep enough as it is. I cannot just carve out another four hours of sleeplessness. I'll die. Like there, you cannot go without sleep to this extent. And meanwhile, there's also a game called New Arc Line coming out, which is it's basically Arcanum Two. It's a steampunk meets magic game where like hmm. a plague is being spread, and it's this weird metal parade that turns people into metal. And you've got to figure out what's going on with that. And you've got all these like set pieces and it's, it's a straight up CRPG. And I'm like sitting there looking at this going, uh, Oh my God, uh, at any other time of my life, I would have been so thrilled, but when am I going to get to play this? How am yeah. I going to play it? And yeah, I feel like the, the engagement metric a thon that we're on right now has gone to the point where it actively detracts from my enjoyment. Like, I, I like games where I can play them until I'm done with them and put them away and not feel like I, I'm missing my chores. You know, I, I really miss being mm-hmm. able to do that. And, and it is just, <sighs> but, you know, regardless, I, like, I, I've, I've blathered like, on a bit. So. Like I'm sitting here right now thinking, okay, could I do the podcast while also logging on and doing my plunder storm for the day? Because I have to do plunder storm every day because I want those cool pirate transmogs, Mm -hmm. but I don't actually enjoy Plunderstorm, but you still have to, like, carve out enough time to do enough Plunderstorm to get, like, uh, a level of renown every day. And I'm thinking, could I multitask this odious chore that I am making myself do to get video game pixels? And it's uh, kind of exhausting. Yeah. Uh, Joey's been really quiet, so I don't know if he just doesn't want to talk about it or not. I got nothing to add. Okay. Uh, then we will move on to talking about the Diablo 4 Season 4 PTR. Briefly, we're going to talk about it because it ended today uh, as we're recording this. I got on there a couple of times, and a lot of the stuff I knew I thought I was going to like, I did like. Like, for instance, the new uh, Codex that just has all your enchants in it. Um, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that you learn and you learn more as you learn more, and they just they just go in there, and it gets all of them in time. And, you know, it, it, it's a drastic improvement uh i d- don't know how i feel about the stuff on gear because i didn't get ch- a chance to get very far on that um but i do think it's overall a decent 
change. Like I, th- I feel like the changes that we saw in the PTR are good changes for Diablo. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they go far enough. Um, I feel like sometimes it still feels sometimes like you, you have to stop doing what you're doing because you, you know, your bags are completely cluttered with garbage and the garbage mm-hmm. is supposed to be magical weapons and armor. So it feels weird being like, Oh God, this thing tossing this magical ax over my shoulder. When am I going to get good stuff? That, that thing's pretty good. No, no. But uh, <laughs> I don't, Joe, I don't think you're doing Diablo right now. No, I'm currently not. It's one of, so, again, another case of too many games, not enough hours in a day. Yeah. So Liz, oh, seriously. You, I mean, you probably haven't played it recently, but you're fairly conversant with it. What what did you think of this? The you know, just do a quick one before we move on to something else. What do you think is the the takeaway from the PTR if you got to do anything? And I have not played on the t- PTR, but I mean, from what I've read on the forums, it sounds like testing went pretty well. I mean, it sounds like all of the changes are good. And I agree with you, Matt. Maybe some of them don't go far enough. Maybe we haven't gone far enough on gear. But I think it's a better idea for Blizzard to maybe take some incremental steps. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. instead of just, like, going all out and making gear totally different, gear's going to be real different starting in Season 4. But, you know, this may not be perfect, but these are a lot of pretty big steps in the right direction to making gear more impactful and easier to use and easier to understand. I so, think the easier think to understand good. thing needs to be rephrased. I, I mean, restated, because that is the big mm-hmm. takeaway for me is, is no more of that. I'm going to actually look at, since I'm streaming as I'm playing Diablo 4 mm-hmm. here, I'm going to look at some of the gear here. Yeah, like looking at this... Um, 7.4 control impaired duration reduction, 16.0 damage reduction from distant enemies, 39.7% poison resistance. It's like, yikes. I, I, I feel like we could have made this simpler. Uh, and it's just, you know, damage to injured enemies, lucky hit, lucky hit chance, uh, physical damage over time. Um, when it's- injured, your potion also grants 45% movement speed for three seconds. Potion drop rates, shatter resistance, damage reduction. And then ranks of charge. It's like, yeah, uh, there's a lot on gear right now. And I do think that making it so there's less stuff on gear, but also making it so there's less stuff like life regeneration while not damaged recently or damage to stunned mm. enemies. You know, there, there's it's, there's some abilities. That are like, you know, is that good? Yeah, when you're comparing things, okay. Uh, Let's see, this gives me bonus damage to stunned enemies. This gives me bonus damage to vulnerable enemies. This gives me bonus damage to when I'm using blood skills. Or this gives me bonus damage when I crit with bone skills. And it's like, okay, which... It's like you've got to have a calculus thing going on to figure out which one of these is actually better for your damage. Yeah, like the the, the axe I'm using here, I'm going to read these to you real fast. But it's got 84% damage to healthy enemies. So I remember before I had damage to wounded enemies. Now I've got damage to healthy enemies. So it's like, okay. Then it's got 36.0% damage to crowd-controlled enemies. 22.5% damage to bleeding enemies. 39.0% damage while berserking. Uh, It's like, yikes. It's like I'm playing Jenga with damage that I do. (laughs) Seriously. You know, I think that simplifying it, it was one of the better moves they could have made. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I just generally feel like they kind of lost the, the plot with affixes. And I think it's a good move to stabilize. Uh, anything else before we move on to the thing that we probably don't like as much? <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Uh, Diablo four fortunate finds. Um, mm. That's today. I think um, personalized yeah. sales coming to the cash shop with discounts up to 50%. And uh, I, I don't know what they're doing here. So, Liz, can you explain this to me? Because I, I am very confused by this post that, that they made. I'm, I'm looking at it now. It's Pez Radar. Usually he's pretty clear, but I don't get it. I mean, a while back, they said they were looking at the shop and looking at pricing adjustments. And when they said that, I kind of thought, oh, some of these prices that are really high, they're thinking about lowering them to more modest prices that maybe I would consider spending. And uh, that is not exactly the case because the $65 horse in the store still in the store the $30 portal pack that lets you change the color of your portals still in the store but what this fortunate finds thing is is sales that are personalized specifically to you that you will log on and find these 
custom personalized sales and uh they'll just be they'll just be in the store you'll have some sales discounts up to 50 percent for you uh i logged on this morning to see okay what's this look like do i have any cool sales is there anything i super need to buy now that we have all these cool sales and okay i have to i have to explain that on my diablo account there are four necromancers there's nothing else there are four necromancers those are the only characters i have on my entire account i have not played another character <laughs> i'm a necromancer so i logged on i looked at these sales and the first one is a set of armor for druids and i'm kind of like okay if you're personalizing these to me you are doing a very bad job it is a uh, usually a 20 dollar armor set and it is now only 10 dollars and it's like so you have customized this sale specifically for me who only has necromancer characters on this account and you are selling me druid only armor for ten dollars if it makes you feel okay. any better i just looked at mine and i got mm -hmm. i got two barbarian things oh see that's I great that's... death death toll which is prestige barbarian equipment uh it's now 1200 instead of 2400 uh to whatever the store currency thing is i don't know yeah so that's like 24 dollars to 12 dollars that's that's pretty much the conversion uh, there's the Ra Wraith Lord's Charger, which is a horse that's down to 40% from 2000 to 1200 I mean, yeah, it seems like there's a good variety of discounts. I don't know where the customization, because these are oh, supposed to be personalized okay. sales. I got a Necromancer. Uh, okay, I, I... I don't have any Necromancers, so that's that's interesting. It's I will admit... Go ahead. I also I also had this item on sale. You, you explain it for us. Uh, it's Kid Baphomet, which is... Uh, Baphomet's the name of a demon from the Middle Ages. Uh, it's, he was basically part of the Trials of the Knights Templar. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a generic Satan-y sounding name, but it's a it's a literally a, a a billy goat kid. It's a little goat that you wear on your back over like a skull backpack, and it's just looking really bemused in the picture. Like, um, okay, I guess I live up on this guy's back now. Uh, and the the twenty percent discount means it goes from eighteen hundred to fourteen forty, and I'm like, that's not enough to get me to buy this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's, it's that's just still not enough. fourteen. That's fourteen dollars. It's fourteen dollars yeah. for a goat you were carrying on your back. I mean, you got some uh, other stuff too. It, yeah, but it's, not it's just mostly. The goat, but it's, it's mostly, mostly the goat. goat. It's and like it's a, the goat it, and some yeah. tattoos and maybe a ghost. It's a cute goat. I'm not arguing it's, it's not uh, true, but yeah, it, you've got your resurrection thing, which is like, you know, not, not particularly interesting to me. Um, there's the scythe of a moon, you know, a moon being a, a goat God and, and he's a ram God in Egyptian mythology. There's the horned fiend cosmetic focus, which is literally just like a, a glowy demon head thing. And then there's an emote where you actually say it's called that's bad. And it's like you, you summon a little demon goat. Okay, and then you kill him. So, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, but, you know, hey, it's nice. Uh, but, yeah, it's a necromancer-only thing. I, I was, like, totally thinking, oh, wow, it's all barbarian stuff. But, no, it's two barbarian things, a uh, mount, which anybody can ride, and then a goat and a backpack. But, I mean, if I wanted the two barbarian sets, I'd be pretty happy. I mean, it's cheap. But I, I don't yeah. really want... I mean, cheap compared to 24 bucks. Cheap. Yeah. Cheaper. <laughs> In quotation marks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, it's not awful or nothing. I do like the Lion of Ariad set, but I don't like it enough to, to spend the money to get it because it's, it, it's still 15 bucks. It does not harm me to have these sales in the game, but it's also yeah. still... The way they had phrased this thing coming had gotten my hopes up and i should know better than to get my hopes up about anything about the video game industry yeah it's it's so, like a, it's like yet again it's another simpsons quote because yep. the simpsons has been on the air for like 30 years <laughs> you've raised and then dashed my hopes quite expertly sir <laughs> uh yeah so it is it is one of those things uh joe i already i feel like i already know how you feel about it but i'm gonna give you the opportunity <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm disheartened by it. Like, I mean, my commentary, I'm not going to blast anybody or complain about it or, or throw leaves off the ground, like Sasquatch in an angry, like fit of rage. I'm just disappointed. Like, I, again, I am one of those people that I am a prime suspect of. If I like something, I will want to give you money 
and I will try to look for ways to give you money uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to video games. Like, I've been really playing Guild Wars 2 lately, and you know what I've done? I've spent money in Guild Wars 2 because I was like, I'm having a ton of fun. I haven't given them any money in like five years. Maybe I'll, you know, buy a little something here and there. And they had stuff that didn't feel predatory and was like, oh, here you go. Here's some cool crap. Um, you know, I, I would, w- I wish that real money things in video games didn't feel like they were trying to capitalize on the FOMO stuff, which again, that's what this is doing. Let's be honest. Oh, Limited yeah. time only your personal, uh, your personal discount shop. Uh, but you got to get it now. Cause it'll, you know, you never know when you're going to get it again. Uh, it, it's, it, yeah, it's just predatory trying to prey on people's FOMO. And I don't know, like maybe some people are happy with this. I am definitely just not one of those people. Alrighty. I think we're all in agreement. So um, quickly, we'll move on to the War Within Collector's Edition is gonna is in pre-orders now. It starts on the 17th, yep. actually. Uh, yeah, pre-orders. Uh, when I say 17th. now, I mean in a week. <laughs> so not quite now. <laughs> but yeah, on the 17th, you, you're you going to get it. starts at 10 a.m. Pacific. It'll start. Pre-orders will start being available. Uh, it ain't cheap. Nope. Um, the Collector's Edition I, is is real pricey. Uh, I think I feel I feel okay saying that. Go ahead, Liz. Uh, we don't actually have a price on it, I don't think, but uh, it's never yeah, cheap. Can, the last couple of expansions, it was not cheap. It's it's not going to be cheap. I can guarantee that. Uh, but yeah, they don't actually have a price up. That is true. Um, I mean, the Dragonflight, the Dragonflight uh, Dragon one is still sitting at one hundred and twenty nine dollars. Yeah, so it's not likely to be cheaper than that. No. Um, so yeah, um, that that feeling you have is you contemplating. You know, do I need this kidney? And the answer is yes. You, you, need know, you know, I mean, if I'm going to spend money on the Diablo store or if I'm going to buy a WoW's Collector Edition, like a, this is the 20th anniversary of the game is going to be about when this is coming out. And yeah, you've got this. I know. Co- I, if I'm going to spend money on some stupid, ridiculous video game thing, it's going to be that Collector's Edition. I just know it. Yeah. I, and, you know. Whilst it is very expensive, likely more so than the last one, but even even if it's exactly the yep. same, it'll it's a bit pricey. But at least it's you know done it one and done. But I guess here's here's my question: like, what what is it in the collector's edition that really like sings to you? Because like the only thing that I usually go out of my way to try to grab, and I don't even bother with the collector's edition, is mm-hmm. the art books. And usually, like, I'll find something. Oh like, yeah. I'll find somebody like I Matt or books. somebody who doesn't doesn't want the art books, and I'll make a deal. Um, mm-hmm. But like, is there anything besides that that really sings to you in the collector's editions? Well, I don't know what this one has. I know that the collector's edition for um, Dragonflight, I got one for my wife because I know she loves mounts, mm-hmm. and and I wanted her to have the mount because she really enjoyed it. Uh, she she still flies the thing when she plays, but she doesn't very often at the moment because work is crazy. But yeah, th- but for isn't her. That- that was it, it's not worth $120 but all the other stuff that you get like the pet and so forth and so on it's a nice thing to give to someone else yeah for it's sure not but, i would buy myself no but i'm I talking did, about I like the the and we're talking about the physical version here because you can get yeah. like the mountain stuff like that that's usually available in the digital version or like which is one I of mean, the pricier digital versions but yeah yeah i mean it's still pricey but i mean yeah well, no, the thing is, is that I bought the digital ver- version first and then upgraded it to the physical one when I knew I was going to get the physical uh, one. Yeah, so, because like you pointed out, you know, the art book, although I don't think there was one in Dragonflight. There was, there absolutely uh, was, which yeah, Matt never yeah, sent me. It's, I'm shaking my fist at you, Matt. Mm, Other Matt, not this Matt, Matticus. Yeah, I, was like, <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't even know if it existed. You're telling, you're, you're mad at me for not giving it to you? <laughs> Jeez, um, man. It did have it did have some cool pins like mm-hmm. uh like one for dragon each dragon flight. themed yeah those are pretty cool um one thing they include that I'm kind of like mm, really about is a mouse pad they continue to include a mouse pad and it's like mm-hmm. do I did I need this in my life do I need I get what in you're saying. The year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get what you're saying, but you have no idea how many mouse pads I have pulled out of these boxes over the years because I my current mouse pad was broken and I couldn't get my mouse to <laughs> pick up the ground. It was like it was the the mouse pad saved me. I have used them. I've used all of them. Um, going all the way back to the original version. Uh, I'm looking at all my collector's editions, which I stopped only around. 
I'd say the last the one I didn't buy was was Shadowlands because they didn't have an art book, mm. and I didn't buy myself one for Dragonflight. I think I'm done getting them. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I so many of those mouse pads got used. So I get you, but I I kind of don't agree. <laughs> the the mean, one thing I go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead uh, I only own two collector's editions. I own Wrath of the Lich King and Dragonflight, and they're both sitting up here on a shelf at my desk, and it's just. Uh, yeah, I, it makes me happy to look at them. It makes me what? happy to have totally them. Fair. I don't, I don't need them, and I certainly don't no. need to go back and collect all of them. But it's kind of nice. And the the wrath and dragonflight boxes go very well together. Um, I, it pleases me. Yeah, all I the actually, boxes are real pretty. Quite frankly, mm, they really yes, are. They're yes, heavy. Indeed. They're they're definitely heavy though too. Like, I mean, I mm-hmm. I think I stopped gathering getting the physical boxes. Um, and Battle for Azeroth, like I stopped getting them. One, mm-hmm. I don't have space anymore. Um, yeah. And while they look cool on a shelf, like I'm not, you know, streaming when need a really cool background or something like that anymore. Mm. Um, it is for you to enjoy. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. Uh, the one thing I wish they would do is I wish they would like going to the mouse pad thing. And I was thinking about this. One thing they could do that would really entice me to possibly like consider getting a physical edition again would be they've been doing these series of desk mats over the years. Um, and I really like the desk mats. They're, they're stitched. They're, you know, large enough. They're like, I think 36 inches wide or long. Um, but they're like really cool art. And it, I love a good desk mat. It's just something I enjoy. Um, I would probably not use it as a desk mat. I'd probably use it as like a TCG play mat or something like that. But if they were to upgrade the mouse, pad from like here's a little tiny mouse pad that nobody ever uses be or maybe somebody does uh to like here's a desk mat included in it i'd be all about that life like that would actually Mm. entice me to maybe consider picking up a physical version for uh, you know again okay um since we've moved on to talking about mouse pads and desk pads uh by the way i like the desk thing uh i think we should probably try to get to the overwatch news which is just that the overwatch 2 season 10 is i i want to say it's alive on the 16th yeah yeah so next tuesday uh as we're recording this it is the tuesday before that tuesday so that's next week boom you can go play overwatch season 10 uh i think a lot of people are interested in venture and i think that it'll be interesting to see how venture plays with people who are, you know, not just testing it out, but actually playing it for real. Um, and I think we did the cover collector's edition. I will be reporting back by Tuesday, by the way. What? <laughs> I will be reporting back on Venture on Tuesday, by the way. All right, cool. That would be we, nice. Inquiring minds want to know. But we should also mention Hearthstone's uh, Battleground Season 7, um, which Battleground Duos. I didn't know that this was coming out. So I got nothing. Uh, So Liz, if you could talk about it for a while, that'd be great. uh, So Battleground Duos announced at BlizzCon and Blizzard has not talked about it since. Like it hasn't, it just hasn't come up. There was a flashy announcement and then it's just been silence. The kind of silence where you wonder if, have they forgotten about this? Is it maybe in some horrible development hell? Is it... What's going on? But is it currently being made for the un- the uh, unannounced uh, stealth, you know, survival <laughs> game that never happened. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, when they when they announce something and then just don't talk about it, it's always it gets a little worrying at some point. Uh, but they announced last week it's coming out with Battleground Season Seven, which is coming out next week, which is really soon. Next week. That's how time works. Next week is really soon. It is due out on April 16th. So, uh, Battlegrounds Duos is a co-op two-player Battlegrounds mode. Battlegrounds is usually, it's an eight-player, you know, no holds barred, everyone fights everyone. But in duos, you team up with a partner. And you are, it's like you're kind of both playing Battlegrounds, but you can do some things to work together and help each other. So you can pass cards to one another. So it can be your rounded battlegrounds and you can see a card come up and you're like, oh, well, my partner is working on this war band that could really use this card. So you could buy that card and pass it to them. But at the same time, Hearthstone doesn't have a lot of great communication options. So you're going to have to go in there and, you know, there's there's going to have to be you're going to have to pay attention. You're going to have to watch and teamwork's going to be 
teamwork could make or break this. You could wind up with a terrible partner and you just it's just like playing Battleground solo. Or you could wind up with a, a great partner and do some interesting things that you can't do in normal Battlegrounds matches. There are also some special heroes you can play in Battlegrounds duos, like Cho'Gall, everyone's favorite two-headed ogre. One one player in this duos match would play Cho, and one player would play Gull, because, of course, you're the two heads of the two-headed ogre. Uh, it, but I think it's going to be interesting. I'm going to check it out. I don't know if it's going to suddenly become my preferred Battlegrounds playing mode, but I, I, I love it when Hearthstone tries new things. And uh, Battlegrounds really my favorite blizzard game mode right now i really love battlegrounds it's kind of my go-to uh, i have you know 10 15 minutes to play something i'm just gonna fire up battlegrounds and i'll sit here and play battlegrounds for a while and i i just enjoy it it requires some focus but not my entire focus and sometimes that's the perfect kind of game you can just i can play for for you know 15 minutes sometimes if i'm playing very badly it's less than that if i'm playing very well it's more than that <laughs> Uh, but you know, it, it, it's, it's a little fun. It's a little concentration. Sometimes it's the perfect game. So this is coming out next week with a new battleground season. That also means a bunch of card changes for both duos and the standard battlegrounds mode. Uh, quests are leaving battlegrounds again, which I'm kind of sad about, but spells, tavern spells will remain in battlegrounds for both duos and the solo game mode and uh just gonna shake things up there'll be a new reward track to progress through i i am looking forward to it i'm 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 excited i'm as hyped as it is possible to get about a video game and my ability to experience hype is pretty low so i'm i'm at my maximum level of hype about this cool uh and as you guys heard next week so get ready uh i think at this point though we're going to try to get to a question because i don't think we have time for more than one and I wanted to do this one the moment I saw it, so we're going to go there. Um, if you've got a question for the show, as is always the case, you can email us, podcast at blizzardwatch.com, the subject line podcast or Blizzard Watch to so know it's for this show, or uh, you can just tell us to thumb wrestle for it. Uh, <laughs> you know, th thanks on that one, buddy. Um, or you can go to our Discord server, and you can leave the uh, – questions in the Q and podcast questions channel, which is for everybody and you, anybody who listens to this podcast or frequents our site can absolutely hit that one up. Or you can go if you're a patron, which cause you know, we love you guys, speaky hugs. Um, if you want to do that one, you can go to the uh, patron Q and podcast questions channel. We do look there first because again, you guys pay the bills. Um, but this one is actually from somebody who works for us. Uh, this is from Dan and, uh, What's the current fantasy version of Cyberpunk 2077? Massive world building, story-driven quests, modern graphics with voice acting and motion capture, other than BG3. Uh, I'm going to throw that one out to Joe first, and then Liz can come in, and then uh, maybe I will if we have time. Oh, geez. That is a... Uh, tough question. That is a tough question. Um, I don't know that there's really an equivalent to it like i'm trying to i'm racking my brain like i don't think there's a game that really does what cyberpunk uh 2077 does in fantasy like i would argue that cyberpunk i mean Baldur's gate 3 doesn't do what cyberpunk does no it doesn't i think yeah. I, I think there was a did, wasn't sony working on a game called stellar blade that was supposed to be similar to it i've seen i have i know absolutely nothing about the game i haven't looked into it I know that the internet is ablaze about different stuff surrounding it, but I thought that that was like supposed to be part of the goal was to make it like some big open fantasy world stuff. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know that there is one. Liz? I, I had trouble with this one mainly because I couldn't think of a fantasy game. And there's nothing exactly like cyberpunk out there, but you can look at games like Baldur's Gate, which are heavily story-driven games with great voice acting um and i mean you know dan asked this question i first my my mind went back to dragon age inquisition and then i'm like wait dragon age inquisition was released in 2014 you know it's not really it's not really an open ago. world yeah it's not an open world yeah, yeah. it's it's not a, it's not an open world but you know you know I mean, what now that I'm, sorry now i'm hmm. thinking about it what about elden ring i think that might actually be the closest it's closest but i would say it is definitely not um, all the stuff that Dan's looking for. Is it fantasy? Yes. Yeah. Is it open world? Yes. Is it fully voiced? Not your protagonist. And yeah, that's the it, thing. 
That's that's a big difference between, say, Baldur's Gate or Elden Ring or Starfield, which was going to be a possible until I really Starfield's not a fantasy game. Uh, but none of them, none of them have a voiced protagonist. Well, even Baldur's Gate doesn't have a voice protagonist. You have yeah, a narrator, exactly. but you yourself do not have a voice. But you have so many great fleshed out characters that do have fantastic voice acting and animation. Oh, yeah. There absolutely is. But even when you're playing one of those origin characters, they suddenly mm-hmm. don't remember how to talk, <laughs> which is to me irritating. I'm sorry. It's there are two things that I don't like about Baldur's Gate three that keep it from being my favorite game. One is that that they don't have any kind of voice, even for characters that should have them, because they they they're right there. You you recorded dialogue from these people, uh, and the number two is I don't like turn based, but we've we've covered that to death. I mean, maybe I the Witcher just, Witcher three might also be up there still too, but I mean that's an old game at this point. Yeah, like I was gonna say Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Valhalla. Yeah, both of them are probably the closest you're gonna get, but they're both pretty old. Um, Valhalla is like twenty yeah. nineteen, Odyssey's twenty eighteen, uh, and uh, Witcher is twenty fifteen. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, I mean you're. Y'all are all more modern than I am with my 2014 Dragon Age Inquisition. Oh, I was, <laughs> but, I uh, was gonna, I was gonna bust Kingdoms of Amalur out, but a protagonist not voiced. <laughs> B, while there's some really good voice acting, some of it isn't that great. Uh, C, is it an open world? Yes, absolutely. Is it fantasy? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's from 2012. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. you might as well say Skyrim at that point. Uh, you know, jeez, yeah. man. But yeah, um, it is really hard. One thing. Feels- oh, go ahead, Liz. I'm sorry. I mean, one thing I thought of immediately was also Horizon Zero Dawn and Forbidden West, which are not, again, are not fantasy game, but in some ways they have a little bit of that fantasy aesthetic yeah, because it's yeah, kind of this, it. it's kind of this post-apocalyptic world where everything is started from scratch. So you're fighting with bows and arrows and things like that instead of you know, high technology, at least not all the time, high technology. I would, I would say that Aloy is one of the few protagonists who's comparable to V, although, mm, you, can't, yeah. you know, it's more like your Geralt and that you can't play as anything but Aloy. There's, there's yeah. no options there. Uh, I, one of the reasons I prefer cyberpunk to the Witcher games is because you can, you can play V how you want V to look and, and act in, mm-hmm, in a way mm-hmm. that you can't with Aloy, but still uh, the, the horizon games are great. And I would still allow them personally. But if we're trying to go by what Dan's put out here, I honestly, stuff that's coming out is more fantasy than stuff that has come out. Yeah, like, I would agree with that. Like the stuff that's been coming out the past couple of years, there has not been a lot of fantasy. And like, for, oh, here's one that's coming out um, Avowed. Yeah. Yeah. From, oh, from, yeah. And that's coming from Obsidian, who have a pretty good reputation on the role playing front. It's a straight up fantasy first person game. Um, I don't know how how open world it's going to be, but it's fantasy. It's first person. Uh, it's going to have. I don't think uh, Obsidian doesn't really know how to not do at least a like a pretty good chunk of interesting, well acted characters. Uh, but other than that, I mean, what's what's come out? I mean, both. I mean, Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. I don't know if you can count that's no, fantasy in that's not, Warhammer, but it's it's, it's not, not the same ro- kind of game. Rogue, rogue Trader. That's a sci fi. Yeah, yeah, all right. But it's got even if we if we if we let it pass just on that front, and I agree with you, it, it is sci-fi. But it's it also lacks the full voiced. There's no mocap. It's very much an old school CRPG in that it's it's like the Diablo camera angle. You know, it's it's not trying to 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 do full motion capture mm-hmm. movement stuff. Diablo has more of that because the cinematics are like that. It, which is, in fact, something that you can only say for Baldur's Gate 3 is that it's mo-capped for cinematics. It's not mo-capped when you're just playing it. That's just a little... It's a it's a better-looking sprite, but it's still just a sprite on a on an isometric group. But you can move around more, though. Sure. So, yeah, it's real hard. This is a really hard question. Yeah, but I, I think... We're, Final I, Fantasy I, games, maybe? Maybe Final Fantasy no. 7? No, no, because mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're not open world. It's... it's, it's the new one is. The new one is. Ish. It's not. No, it, I, I wouldn't class seven remake or revamp or whatever the heck it's called. The new one is supposedly open world. I if would not classify it as that okay. as somebody who's played it. All right. Um, it still it still very much wants you to go and do the things, and it has a limited number of things you can go and do. There is it's it's, but, but that's a whole separate category. 
I, I so think what what we're saying here is that we're not have we're not having an easy time coming up with anything within the past I, five years. But I think you're right, and I think that what we're going to see, partially due to this the wild success of Cyberpunk 2077, is a game that will be like that, but will either be fantasy or steampunk or something like there, that formula will, or that, that idea, that core concept will wind up getting applied to something else. It's just not here yet. I mean, for all we know, Dreadwolf is going to be that you know, entirely maybe, possible. Maybe. Dreadwolf, yeah, Dreadwolf could be really good. Who knows? I'll believe Dragon Age Dreadwolf exists when I am literally playing it and not a moment before. Yeah, that's fair. I, that's probably a good approach to take, quite frankly. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to answer this one because I didn't have an answer. And I was hoping that one of you two would. And uh, and Liz then responded, I don't think I'm going to have anything for this. And I, I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting because I don't think Joe, <laughs> Joe and I are pretty similar on game stuff. So if I'm having this hard of a time, I don't think Joe's just going to pull one out like nothing. And yeah, it really depends on how, how flexible are you hmm. with some of the words we're using. Um, like, how what is fantasy and you know there's one game that i really wanted to to recommend but then i got the chance to play it at a friend's place and it was so bad that i forgot the name <laughs> For, forspoken <laughs> forspoken is it forspoken the one where the girl goes from being homeless in new york to a fantasy world where she has magic power that is that is for spoken, yes. Yeah. The fir- the part where she's homeless in New York is actually really interesting and touching and moving. And then she gets to the fantasy world and the game just I don't know if it got drunk or what happened, but it just it's just being on itself. It's like, what happened to you? Why are you like this? So yeah, I don't and there was that sand one. Do you guys remember the sand one? I don't know. There was the one where they're like riding around on sand. Or no, that no, no, that's not the one. That was the legacy of something. My God, there's been so many, and some of them just sank so fast. I, mm. I can't. 2023 was like a lot of games, guys. It was a lot of games. Too I, many. I, yeah. I, I don't know if I'll say too many, but I will say that you know a lot of games just didn't survive. So, yeah. But I guess that's going to wrap us up. Um, do you guys want to take the time to do another one, or are you good stopping here? I think we're good. Okay. Uh, that means I turn to Joe and give him puppy dog eyes until he does the thing. <laughs> All right. Well, Blizzard Watch is made possible due to the generous contributions of Patreon.com slash Blizzard Watch. Your continued support means this podcast lighting community is able to thrive and grow. Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast, better chance of having your question answered on our podcast or the queue and an ads free site experience. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, thank you to Liz for bringing us that, that mind bender of a question from Dan. Uh, and thank you to Dan for asking it. Um, and thank you to me just because, I never thank myself. Yeah. I really should be nicer. To thank myself. you, Matt. Uh, I'm I'm glad you're here with us. I'm also glad good. Joe is here with us. So I'm not I'm trying not to be biased here. I'm glad everyone is here with us. Yeah, Matt, Joe, and everyone listening at home. I'm glad and, and, for all of you. And if y'all want to like continue being with us while you're doing it, we can go to the blog. We we have an actual website mm-hmm. called Blizzard Watch. I don't know if you know that, um, <laughs> but you can go there and there's there's like stuff there you can read. I, we do have more stuff on everything we've talked about. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Though I have I have spent some time trying to find someone who is cynical enough to write the article that I think we need to write about the new Diablo for store sales. Uh, so we don't oh. have an article about that yet. Hi, I'm cynical <laughs> enough. You could have just put that in there and it would already be in, in existence. <laughs> the only reason that I haven't written that was because I'm like, well, you know, someone's probably going to get it. If you need someone to write it, no one's doing it. I'll do uh, it. I, I, I uh, feel extremely cynical about this. <sighs> yeah, our, my counterpart Liz is currently working on it, but we do not have an article up on the site. But uh, right, let soon, me know. Sooner, let me... sooner, power of cynicism will turn into an article, and yes, it is. It'll be great. It is something we we have here as cynicism. All right, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we love you. Thanks for you for being here with us on the show. Uh, are we still hiring? We are not. We are not. Okay, so we don't have we to tell you not. To doing that. I. I'm I'm sorry we got some great apps and uh I, I we've been we've been going back and forth on who to choose and I'm probably going to be emailing people this week. So, right. unless I unless I change my mind on which of these people I like best. Sorry, it's a really hard choice. It's so hard. But since you don't have to worry about that guys, you can just be thanked by us and you know, this has been the Blizzard Watch podcast and we'll be back next week.